Fasten your seat belt. Welcome back and thanks for watching. This video covers my trek through using the Gracenote OEM player in the 2023 Forerunner to play digital music files from an external USB storage device. Toyota's multimedia system can do more than play music. I'll be sticking to music, digital audio files, and how USB storage devices feed the player. Over decades I've sampled 78 RPM records, vinyl records, reel-to-reel -reel tape, audio cassettes, my own recordings, and CDs into an MP3 library. I enjoy all sorts of music and always had it playing in the car. It amazes me I can keep almost 10,000 tracks on a micro SD card which is about the size of your fingernail. Music management software provides flexibility in storing, organizing, copying, sorting, searching, selecting, and listening to your music. Music players allow your listening experience to travel with you wherever you go. Coming back to the Forerunner's Grace Note player, I've had some challenges with it. Some have been resolved while others remain outstanding. Is this user error, limitations, software bugs, or something else? Feel free to comment. As background, I'm coming from a 2015 Nissan Xterra Grace Note player. My music library is about 9,700 MP3 files saved in the root directory of a USB storage device. I just plugged that into the USB connector and the player would detect this and index all the music without any fuss. It also supported M3U playlist files. The touchscreen provided all the basic music controls you needed. When I plugged that same storage device into the Forerunner's USB connection, nothing happened. We'll come back to why in a few minutes. The multimedia system includes a single USB 2.0 Type-A host connection. A host connection means it provides 5 volts at 500 milliamps in addition to serial communications. The software supports a USB hub with two ports. This means you can manage two USB storage devices which comes in handy. The old style aux input has been removed so connectivity to external devices is via Bluetooth pairing. The menu button brings up a screen with seven functions. Touch audio to navigate to the audio screen which includes five functions on the left. Let's talk first about compression digital audio files and setting up a USB storage device for the player. Audio originates as a time varying or analog signal. Saving it to a file requires software that performs sampling or ripping. A music management program like Media Monkey can rip CDs automatically. It will also create a file name and fill in metadata that the player will scan into its database. Metadata, referred to as ID3 tags in MP3 files, includes title, artist, album, track, genre, year and other data. This data is required to search, select, group, and display music tracks. A track is the smallest unit of playable media and equals one file on your USB storage device. As for music in other forms such as records, cassettes, or reel-to-reel -reel tape that needs to be sampled, a program like Audacity can handle that task from a PC with an aux or line input. Here's a setup I use to sample music from a tape. This method can be used for any cabled analog audio source. As for digital audio files, many formats exist with MP3 being one of the most popular. These are compression algorithms that endeavor to reduce file size with minimal to no impact on audio quality. They fall into two basic categories as either lossy or lossless. This refers to how much downsampling will occur as the audio is converted to a file. Audiophile listeners will usually choose a lossless format given it provides the best quality. Casual listeners may be fine with some loss in audio quality. This is a matter of personal taste and file size trade-offs. So experiment and pick what works best for your storage and listening experience. Compression can reduce file size to 10% of a CD track with some loss in quality. Lossless formats can reduce file sizes between 50 and 70%. Toyota publishes the Navigation and Multimedia System Owner's Manual, which I've referred to in this video. Per that manual, the player supports eight compression formats which are shown in the graphic. Digital audio files must conform to one of these formats to be recognized. Any good music management program will support all of these file formats as they are all very common. The USB storage device must be formatted to FAT16 or FAT32. USB 2.0 is supported. A two-port hub can be used to manage two storage devices. If you supply a volume label, this will appear on the Select Audio Source screen. The USB drive I transferred over from the Xterra wasn't seen because I didn't select it. That simple. As for USB storage, some maximum limits are documented to include 9,999 files, 
3,000 folders and 255 files per folder. I did find that folders can hold 500 files. Folders can be nested, but Toyota recommends not to exceed two levels deep. Toyota refers to their firmware as a multimedia system. For reference, the GraceNote database version I'm using is shown in the photo. There is a link in the description to instructions for updating the multimedia system. As of February 19, 2023, the link indicates no updates available for the 2023 Forerunner. I'll assume all my firmware is current. It's a good idea to make sure you have the latest firmware version. Comments welcome on this. For libraries of 500 tracks or less, simply copy the digital audio files to an empty storage device, plug that into the USB port, select the device as the audio source and enjoy the music. Manual selection and voice commands will work as expected. For larger music libraries, things get more complicated and selection functions break down. Here are my steps to get a 9700 track library to play. 1. Format a 64 gigabyte thumb drive to FAT32 and give it a volume name, Play All. 2. Create 20 folders. 3. Copy 499 tracks to the first 19 folders. 4. Copy the rest to folder number 20. 5. Insert the drive into USB 2 port. 6. Select Play All from the available USB devices. It took about 30 minutes to index all my tracks. Accessory timed out before indexing was completed. Indexing time may occur again when you switch USB devices or use the browse functions. This seems unpredictable. When the indexing is done, the first track in the first folder will begin to play. You should see the total number of tracks in the count. Tracks will play in sequence unless you press shuffle. The sequential and shuffle play modes all worked fine. You can check this by advancing tracks. In sequential mode, the track number will advance by one. Random mode will advance to a random track number. Watch the current track number to confirm this. Manual track title searching didn't work. Manual artist searching did work. Voice command track title searching didn't work and artist searching gave unpredictable results. When the artist search did work, it displayed the artist's albums. You'll need to know which album your track was located in. The old Xterra player would list all the tracks associated with that artist, removing the need to know about albums. Okay, earlier in the video, we talked a little bit about this audio button here, and you want to touch that, and that'll take you to your audio screen. And there were five functions here on the left that we didn't get into. And I also mentioned about my flash drive being plugged in and not doing anything. So the source is what you want to do here. And you'll notice these two icons here are actually the two USB drives. I have a two port hub plugged into the USB port and I've formatted these drives with FAT32 and I've given them a volume name of music and also play all. So the music is formatted with, let's see what it brings back here. It's a little sluggish. Sometimes it's, uh, it's very sluggish. So I have three folders um, on that drive. These are kind of experimental. I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later. And the other we go back here, we go into out, we go into the other drive, which is play all. That's the big monster library. You can see here, 9,788. And this one, I don't know how long it'll take to explore the folders. It, it may take 20 minutes, but this has got 20 folders on it. So, but anyway, that's the story with how you get access to the different drives if you've got two drives in there. So that's kind of how that works. Okay, I tried to display the 20 folders for my large library. I'm in about six minutes so far with gathering information. So I'm sitting here in the car waiting for this thing to kind of grind through and display the folders so you can see what I did here to get my large library displayed. So be back in a few minutes. Okay, we're in uh, 10 minutes so far and uh, we're still waiting. So I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm just going to let this grind away and I'll be back. All right, we're in about 15 minutes now. Um, 
this display here, it doesn't show any progress, you know, nothing 15%, 20%, 30%, 40%. So I have no idea how far along this is, but it's not done yet. So let's see how long it takes. Okay, well, as you can see, the screen went blank. We timed out the accessory, which I don't quite understand because I'm sitting here in the car. Looks like just shy of 20 minutes. So we started back up again. Go back to accessory, start this whole process up again. I don't know whether it remembers where it left off or not. The good news is, while this thing is grinding through, trying to find the folders, the music does play. So, I don't know what's going on. It, it, isn't, um, it isn't Toyota's uh, finest hour with respect to the player. So, we'll go back here to browse and let's pick up where we left off. We want to go into folders and so we're now in 21 minutes so let's see what happens okay there it is we finally got it let's see uh looks like about 22 minutes and it looks like even though the accessory timed out it remembered some of the progress that it had made so i just wanted to show you what i had to do to get that large library squared away what you're seeing here is just music folders that I labeled 00 to 19. That's the last one. And although the manual says 255 tracks per folder, I was able to fit in 500 tracks per folder. So 19 folders got me 9,500 uh, tracks. And then what happened after that was the 20th folder was the little bit of tracks that were left over 200 and change 288 whatever it worked out to be so that's kind of what goes on with this and we go back to now playing and you'll notice here that this is kind of weird and i don't really know why this is now displaying the file name even though the id3 tag has the proper track title in there so this is kind of weird and it gives you the artist that's correct and it would be kind of nice if you got the track name and then the artist and maybe the album so the only way that i have found around this is if you go ahead and select play all i don't know that there's any manual controls so i got to go to the voice activation so let's try that play all Okay, so what it does is it's going to pick the very first track, which is alphabetical. And you'll notice this displays properly now. This is the name of the track, and then this is the artist, and then this is the album. So that's a nicer display, and I can go ahead and just check to see if I'm in shuffle, which is this indicator right here. I'm going to go ahead and advance the track. All right, so we went to 585, and that's expected it was just a random number so that kind of works okay and we'll just pick another one there it's 4344 so this particular uh, shuffle works okay and this is how i got a large library to play i'm going to come back the searching on this got funky and i'll go back um, and show you that in another um, segment in this video after that but that's kind of the basics and the um, yeah the, you go back to source here and then you can go into this is a smaller amount of music and we can go into browse and folders and there's only three folders in this I think this is 300 and change um, not sure how many's in this but all in all this is probably less than 500 tracks across these three folders. Well, let's go back into source just for fun. Go back to the big library and let's go back into browse and let's go back into folders and there we go again. So now we're back to uh, square one. This may take 20 minutes. It, it, it may not, but if your music is organized as folders, for, oh, all right, so it, it, it came back. So it came back pretty quick. 
So not sure how the player operates here. Sometimes it's, it's real quick or a few minutes. Other times it's a long-winded process. So we go back to now playing and this display is still pretty good. So that's the story. Like I said, it's, it's not uh, one of Toyota's uh, finest hours when it comes to uh, players. Okay, in this segment, we're gonna take a look at how the search feature works. We've got two basic avenues. One is to do a manual search with the keypad, and the other is to do a voice command search. So as I had mentioned previously, we've got two USB storage devices, volume name music and volume name play all. The play all is my main library, and that's the 9700 and change tracks. This particular source here is actually a subset. So you'll notice right off the bat, I'm playing this folder dinner, which is just kind of dinner music. And for reasons I can't explain, the player displays the file name rather than the actual track name. And it displays the artist here and then it displays the folder. So what we can do is we can go in here to browse and we can do browse by songs. This library has got maybe a little bit over 400 songs in it. It doesn't have a lot. So we can go in here and let's put the first three letters of a song that I know, New World in the Morning, which is in there. And let's see what happens. Okay, this came back with a lot of songs that began with N-E-W at the top and end something. It's not bad, so we just hit this. And then we get the song that we were looking for. I don't have the album information filled in for this song. I'm, I'm not sure what album it's, it's from, but the track title from the ID3 tag is displaying properly and the artist is displaying properly. So let's go back and do another search. We'll do songs. It's a little sluggish. I, in my opinion, I think for the few number of songs that is in this library, it should be coming back a little faster. So we'll go into the keypad and let's type in another song. See what happens here. Like I said, I think this should be responding a lot faster than it does. Okay, it came back, and there actually are two tracks. One is a, an MP3, which is a little undersampled, and the other is a, a Vorbis Og. So I don't know which is which, but we'll just pick one here, and let's see what happens. So yeah, that's a Megadeth uh, track, uh, album Cryptic Writing. So that actually did come back properly, so we'll let that play. So let's assume that that's working pretty well, and you can browse by... Uh, artist. Let's see, we can try that. And we can go up here and browse by artist. My opinion, a little bit more sluggish than it should be, given there's not really that many tracks on this drive. So we'll just kind of let this grind away for, for a minute. Okay, so we'll go in here and let's type in So we'll type in that, see what comes back. Okay, this is real, like really sluggish. So we'll go in here to Megadeth and there's two albums in here. So unless you know what track belongs to a particular album, you can't really find the track all that easily. I mean, we can go in here and let's just go in and hit this and so we've got two songs there. Again, these are not complete albums, so we could do it that way. We could go back and we can go in here. And there's a bunch of songs in here, so we can find them. And like I said, I've got duplicates in here, so. So that works reasonably well. This could be a little bit better, but it, it does work if you're not driving because all these search facilities that I've just showed here, they get locked out when you're driving, so you, you, can't, you can't do anything. 
So let's go back and let's try to pick a song by the, uh, the voice commands and see how that works. Play the song New World in the Morning. Okay, so that's that's correct. Let me pick another one. These are songs that I know are in there. Play the song Poor Side of Town. Play the song What's the trouble? Okay, so that all worked and it's it's pretty impressive. The, the voice commands work and you can select uh, by an artist. I can go back here and say, play the artist Megadeth. So I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah, okay, so it's it's picking a, uh, I guess, the first song from whatever album is the first album listed. So that, at least it came back with the right, with the right artist. So it's, it's pretty good. That, that works. Again, this is a relatively small library. Let's go to the, the main library and see how this works with that. Many, many more tracks. Okay, this is the actual main or master library. You can see here 9,788 songs. So there's a lot of tracks in here. So let's try to do a, a keyboard search and we'll see what happens here. So we'll search by an artist. And this is probably going to take a while. So we'll, we'll see. I, I'm not sure. The player is a little bit unpredictable here. Here's the artist. Again, there's a lot here. So... Let me go back and let's pick the same artist we did before. Okay, so that came back. Now we've got all the albums that are associated with that artist. And again, we'll go in to an album and we can then pick we can pick a track. So that's the right song. That that works. Let's try to browse for a specific track title. So we'll go back here and we'll hit songs. And I think that's going to take a little while. So ah, it came back pretty quick. So let's go into here and let's try that uh, let's try that other other song and see what we get. Let's go down and see if we can find that that song. There it is. So that came up. So this obviously is going to slow down. Like I said, we got 9,788 tracks and it's going to be a little bit slower. We can go back and let's do um, an artist search again and we'll go in here let's see what comes back here so we're looking for Johnny Rivers okay so we timed out now on the accessory so let me get let me get through that that's a little bit of a hassle like I said, I'm sitting in the car here, and it should know I'm in the car, but at 20 minutes, it kind of times out. we got to get through these safety screens. So we'll go back here, repeat our search, and we're looking for an artist. Had we been having the car run and we didn't time out in the middle of this, this probably would have gone a little bit better, but... 
It's kind of the stuff you got to deal with. Let's try that Johnny River search again. Go down. There it is. So here's poor side of town. So that all works. It, like I said, it's a little sluggish, but uh, it all works, and it's it's going to throw you uh, into that album. So we've kind of lost our big library, and what we would have to do to get back to that is we've got to issue a verbal command. That's the only way that I can figure out how to do it. Play all. So that gets us back to the whole library. We're in shuffle mode. We can advance to an arbitrary track. So let's try to do some of these searches using the voice commands and see how that works. Play the artist, Johnny Rivers. Okay, so we got that. And let's try another artist. Play the artist, Megadeth. Okay, I don't know what happened with that. It sent us off into space. Let's, let's try another artist. This is kind of a problem I've had with this voice commands with a large library. It, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't really know what's going on. Play the artist, Jackie Davis. So it got that, and let's try another one. Play the artist, Glenn Campbell. So it got that. So like I said, it, it, it's kind of hit or miss, and let's try to pick a specific track and see how that works. Play the song, Poor Side of Town. Okay, so that's good. Play the song, New World in the Morning. Sorry, I missed that. Play the song, New World in the Morning. I'm sorry, I still didn't understand. To see a list of available command examples, say something like address help or phone help. Other available commands are displayed on Cancel. the screen. All right, that didn't work too well. And let's try uh, another, another track. Play the song, What's the Trouble? Please try again. Play the song, What's the Trouble? Say the list number of the one you want. Cancel. Okay, this is some of the problems I've been having with the voice commands. It, it, it's hit or miss. It, it works. It doesn't work. It sends you off in the wrong place. I know those tracks are in there. Um, there's another track by Johnny Rivers that we can ask for see what happens with that. Play the song Summer Rain. Okay, so it got that. I don't know whether it's just looking within the folder, the Johnny Rivers folder, or his album. I don't know, but let's go back and try to go from the, the, the full library. Play all. Play the song, What's the Trouble? Sorry, could you repeat that? Play the song, What's the Trouble? I'm sorry, I still didn't Cancel. understand. Okay, so that, that wasn't a problem. So, um, a little glitch here. Comments welcome if somebody's figured this out or maybe somebody else has had this problem. I I don't know uh, what's going on with it. And again, when you're driving, the mechanical or manual search 
facilities are locked out so you can't do anything with that so you got to work on the voice command so that's it i i don't really think this is one of grace notes or toyota's better players i've had problems with it but uh it is what it is so comments welcome This player is folder based, so if your music library is more than 500 tracks, you'll need folders. The root is treated as a folder. For example, if you just copy a large library to the root of a storage device, the player will index the first 500 files and ignore the rest. Toyota says the player will manage 3,000 folders, which I haven't tested. Playlists like M3U files are not supported. Probably not a big deal since folders could replace dedicated M3U playlists. You can create folders to hold your favorite tracks, artists, genres, albums, etc. These can be searched and played like playlists. We created a dinner folder to hold easy listening tracks, which works fine. What's annoying about how folders work is they display file name, artist, and folder name. It would be nice to see the track, artist, and album names. Put the folder name to the right of the storage device volume name, or put it on a fourth line. When ripping tracks, music management software will usually build a file name from track number, artist, hyphen, track name, and file type. This creates an unfortunate cryptic display. Media Monkey has a utility which will automatically scan an entire library and create file names from ID3 tag information. What I did was build up file names from the track name followed by a sequence number. This is a partial workaround but doesn't get the album name on the third line. If you give a voice command, play all, the track, artist, and album will display, at least most of the time. I haven't figured out why this is hit or miss. My master library of 9,700 plus tracks required 20 folders. The first 19 got loaded with 500 tracks each, and the remaining tracks ended up in folder 20. This took a number of hours to load all the files into 20 folders. The old Xterra player would simply index a storage device loaded with all my music files. No folders were ever required. On the Toyota player, once I got 20 folders loaded, I was able to index all the music and use shuffle to play the entire library. The locking out of manual search functions with a passenger present is very frustrating. Voice commands don't work reliably either for locating music in my large library. Even if they did work, voice commands don't allow queuing the next track while the current track plays. On longer trips when Jeannie is a passenger, she likes to be able to control music playback. Toyota's player doesn't permit this. Another thing I've noticed is degraded audio quality from Toyota's MP3 Kodak at my 130 kilobits per second compression level. Cymbals and high notes sound objectionably shiny. My iAudio X5, PC, and Xterra players worked fine. If you're planning on using MP3 compression to save storage space, I'd recommend not going below 170 kilobits per second. At this point, we're looking at a Sony Walkman dedicated player paired as a Bluetooth device to get around the aforementioned problems. I'll report back in another video on how this goes so we can learn together.